So now we're going to talk about JavaScript functions and JavaScript arrays. So functions use the function keyword. Um, unlike Python, this would be like in the def, this would be like def in Python. And uh, so we basically say, you know, fun function, and then give the name of a function, and then the parameters to the function. And then you have a curly brace to start the function and then end the function. Um, move this over here and then you have return to return the resulting value and that re return uh, defines the return value that's going to be used in some expression so you're cruising along you're in the middle of an expression you encounter a function it calls the function runs the call and then the return value is what is the residual that's placed in that plus so whatever that value is in this case it's going to add uh, four and five and end up with nine as the result in prod equals nine. So the so so the functions other than that are like most programming languages, um, ex except when it comes to global variables. And so most of the time when you're working with a function, every variable that you design de define inside the function is local to that function. And so if you use the same variable outside the function, now I'm doing this two lines away, but really often this functions inside of a library and that doesn't even know what variables are being used outside of it. And so by, it, by default, these two are the same. And that really, I'm not really familiar of a lot of other programming languages where the default is that that's kind of a global variable if you don't make it worse. It depends on whether this global variable is defined before or after two. In this case, I'm defining the global variable before, and I say nothing special about GL, and so it's global. And so I set it to 123, then I call this function, and it sets it to 456. And when we're at, come back from the function, it's 456. So that's kind of weird. It's this weird kind of super global by default, which is not the way we usually like to run functions. So what we do, and it's really weird, there's no other programming language that makes you say, don't be global. Most other programming languages, if they have a global capability, and not all of them do, they're like, this is the weird one that's global and everything else is local. What you do is it, if you don't say it's local, it's gonna be global. So the var keyword basically says it's local. It's just, this is a variable and it's local. And so I can say, you know, var gl equals 456. That means that that variable has no effect outside the function, i.e. the function lives in its own little silo, which is the way most functions usually work unless we explicitly bust out of the little silo. So if in this case, if we do gl equals 123, then we call a function check, and we look at gl, even though inside a function there's a gl that's 456, not the same gl, and so we get 123 when it's all said and done. So that's really quite nice. But you do put a lot of vars in, and one of my biggest bugs in, in when I write JavaScript is to forget to put the var in. So I now just kind of been punished enough to know, always put the var in, so you get what you kind of expect as a default in most other programming languages that all function defined, variables that are defined inside of a function are local unless you're very explicitly doing otherwise. JavaScript has arrays. They look a lot like Python lists. So here we have an array that's uh, three strings. JavaScript has an associative structure, but it's not an associative array, and it's it's more like a, a dictionary, but it's not. It's an object. Objects can be many, many things, and we'll talk a bunch. We'll have a whole lecture on nothing but objects, but right now they kind of look like a dictionary. Key, value, pair. Key, value, pair. Key is name. Value is Chuck. Key is class. Value is DJ for e. And so that, when you print that out, away you go. Now, you can say a sub zero, which gives you x, which is that first element, and you can say b sub quote name quote. You can do that. The another way to say that is b dot name. Those two syntaxes, and this confused the heck out of me when I was first learning JavaScript. Those two syntaxes mean the same thing. They both are saying look up an attribute 
of the object B that's named name. And again, equivalent, they, they are the same thing, even though for every other language that you ever look at, you think those are very different creatures, but not so in JavaScript. And it has to do with the fact that B is an object. It is an object. And so objects are the associative structures, but they're even more powerful than associative arrays are in, uh, in some languages, like dir dir directories. Linear arrays, you can make linear arrays. You can fill them up a couple different ways. You can either fill them up, you know, we start and make an array and we can push some elements in. I don't like the name push, I like append better. That would be what we would say if we were in Python, if this were a list, um, but it works. Push kind of pushes onto the end. Normally push means we push onto the beginning, but in, in computer science, push usually means push down, not append, but so I think Python has a JavaScript there where, where we say append in Python, we say push in JavaScript. Or we can just fill it up with the array, we, um, array sub zero and array sub one, and then we can fill up a nice linear array if we want. And remember, in JavaScript, arrays are arrays. They're not dictionaries, they are lists. In Python, they're, you know, Python has lists and dictionaries, and JavaScript has arrays and objects. There's other syntaxes for making arrays. You can say array and then just have a list of array, the list of things that make up the array, and you get an array, or you just use the constant form, that's square brackets. And this looks exactly like how we would do it in Python. And so that works. So, so in that particular line, you can write Python in JavaScript if you so desire. Up next, we're going to talk about control structures.